Welcome to the final day of my Zero to Hero challenge in Albion Online. In this challenge, I made a new character in this game, and in just 3 days, I reached 9 million total silver, 4 million total fame, and level 50 on all of my specializations. I can also successfully do tier 8 content, equip tier 7 gear, and already scored various wins in PvP. In this video, I will go over everything that happened on day 3, which is the final day of this series. If you haven't watched day 1 and day 2 of this challenge yet, I would recommend starting with those. If you enjoyed the series so far, please give these videos a like and subscribe to my channel. Both of these actions help the channel enormously, so thank you for doing so. Now let's get going with day 3, the final day of my Zero to Hero challenge in Albion Online. I start the final day by buying my very first set of gear that's of tier 7 level. Since I mentioned that this new character can equip tier 7 at the end of this challenge, I figured it would be good to showcase that whilst going about my first bit of tier 8 content. And that's right, we're only at the start of day 3 and I can already do tier 8 content and equip tier 7 gear. To give off that real endgame vibe, I also buy a Grey Wolf, which is one of the best mounts to roam the Outlands with, and I also buy a few tier 8 solo dungeons to start my day with. After waiting at the entrance of my solo dungeon for 90 seconds and making sure the dungeon closes behind me, I get knocked down very early on because I simply pulled way too many mobs. Although I am in a pretty nice set, pulling too many mobs at once does remain dangerous. So save your money on repair bills and don't pull too many mobs at once unless you're certain you can kill them. Shortly after I get the fame juice from the side boss which is always nice to have as it makes for a very great and welcome fame bonus. Since this buff is on a timer you want to utilize it as well as possible which means you want to refrain from making mistakes and getting knocked down. However I make another very common mistake players typically are guilty of in solo dungeons, which is not avoiding the abilities of the mobs, which leads to me getting stunned and because of that I get knocked down for the second time as a result. So not only do I miss out on valuable seconds of my precious fame buff, but I also rack up my repair bills even more. I already got knocked down twice and I'm not even done with my first solo dungeon. So learn from my mistakes and try not to repeat them. After killing my very first tier 8 solo dungeon boss, which is guarding an uncommon chest, I get 183k worth of items. My first tier 8 dungeon made for almost 300k in profits. As I pop my second dungeon map and make my way to it, I run into two players that are fighting. Right now I have a rather expensive set on me together with a fair amount of loot, so my top priority is to stay safe. As I inspect one of the players, I see they have an average item power of 1500, so that's definitely someone I want to avoid at all costs. I can see many beginners being tempted to jump into the action, which would simply be a big mistake. In my second dungeon, I get knocked down once again, and as I'm editing this video, I feel like this wasn't that much of an issue in this challenge up to this point. Now, since I am using flat T8 solo dungeon maps, the content is noticeably more difficult than a regular T8 solo dungeon, so the damage the mobs do and the effects of their abilities are noticeably more powerful than all the content I did prior. And since I know many newer players struggle with these exact issues, I thought it would be a great opportunity to emphasize that you shouldn't underestimate the mobs, as doing so will lead to many knockdowns and unsuccessful clears. From the final boss of my second tier 8 dungeon I get 40k, which is noticeably lower than the first one, but luckily the final boss of the third dungeon first drops me a tome and then rewards me with an uncommon chest that contains slightly over 300k worth of loot. As I loot the chest I become overloaded, which is a small issue I can tackle by putting my boots on Kuria. This is a passive that grants you extra weight that can be found on every combat boot within the game. As I was doing my third solo dungeon, one of the mobs dropped another tier 8 solo dungeon map, so I figured I might as well do that one too. And I'm happy I did, because the final boss in this one is Ancient Hero, which is protecting a rare chest. So far, I only had uncommon chests, so it's nice to have one of a higher rarity. This one nets me close to 400k, 
which puts my total to 1,152k silver. And that's by doing just four tier eight solo dungeon maps. Now at this point, I have a very high amount of loot on me, both equipped and in my inventory. As I exit my dungeon and go northwest to head back to town, I run into a couple gankers that stop me from doing so. Although I am close to the exit, it's not worth taking the risk, so I simply change my course and go somewhere else. You remember, I took this exact risk on day 2 and died because of it. I take the Invis Shrine and head back to town and secure well over a million at the start of my day. And of course, I also made some great progress in fame because of the solo dungeons. Aside from listing the items I just got on the market, I also relist all the items I put on there so far that didn't sell yet. It could be I could undercut on some of them, so checking the status of the items you've got listed every now and then could help with selling. Now I did my daily dose of solo dungeons, I depot my tier 7 set and equip a budget 4.2 set to go out and roam with. At this point, my economy can support losses of 4.2 sets very easily, and although I can stick to 4.1 if I want to, the extra item power is simply very useful. Once I go out to the Outlands, I see a bunch of players dying near a blob, and since I am still under the effect of the Invisibility Shrine, I can safely check what's going on there. I see a couple bodies where the fight took place with only a healer inside, so I take the risk of looting one of the bodies, as the healer won't be able to do anything on his own. This nets me 128k free loot for barely any risk. My current 4.2 set is worth about 170k, so this almost covers an entire new set. Since I am still in the portal area, I can simply secure this loot by going back. The next time I die, I won't feel half as bad since I already got the majority of the silver secured. I go back out and this time find a portal that leads to the roads of Avalon. I see a chest which you always want to loot as it simply makes for a good chunk of free silver. Lucky for me, I ran into a duo that's having a hard time on the green chest right after, which makes for two free kills. This makes for a nice amount of effortless PvP fame and also a good chunk of loot once again. Almost 700k in total. Now I can see why this duo was having such a hard time because this is a tier 8 green chest, which is the highest level, and their builds weren't that great for this content. Despite having higher level gear than I have, they were struggling much more with the mobs, so they simply increased the difficulty of the content by bringing in an effective gear. I decided to finish the chest they were doing, which first of all grants me a good amount of fame and secondly another 125k in loot. This little adventure already made for 825k in gains, and by now you should know what that means. We go back to town to secure the loot once again. I literally got 5 new sets in a matter of minutes, while gaining both PvE and PvP fame on top of that. Back to the roads I go to farm some fame and hopefully get some loot where this time I have enemies on top of me as I am farming. Having my mount up allows me to quickly leave the area, swap the PvP skills and wait until they're gone. The safer option would be to leave the area altogether, but since I was almost done, I decided to greet for the green chest, which turns out to be a common one with 75k in it. I do another chest, this time a tier 6 one, which rewards me with a rare chest that has 516k in it. As I want to head back to town to secure this loot, I run into a gang group that's camping the portal I want to take, so I take the long way around and try to go there from the other side. Unfortunately, they have people on this side as well and somehow I got teleported back into the snare charge. I make another 4.2 set and go back out to the Outlands once again. In the portal zone I see a medium chest that's on a low timer, so I decide to check it out. As I get near, the group on it dismounts me, so I pop my boots and run to the invisibility shrine. Once I get it, I go back to the chest and take my revenge.
Now my set was about 170k and I got 120k in bags, so this was simply a trade-off between 50k silver and 80k in fame, along with sweet revenge which you can't really put a price tag on. Time to buy another set and this time do some lethal corrupted dungeons, although I am limited to my light crossbow build since that's the only one I used so far, it is a build that's good in many different contents, even corrupted dungeons. And it shows starting with my very first lethal kill where I get 130k pvp fame and almost 600k in loot. After doing only one Lethal Corrupted Dungeon, I already made my set three times over and more, which means I want to go back to secure once again. As I go for my second Lethal Corrupted Dungeon, my next target can't wait to get killed inside, so we have a little fight outside. The last bit of content I do on this Zero to Hero character are green chests on the roads of Avalon where I farm a bit more fame and loot and my final kill before ending this challenge. In the end I end up with a tier 7 set with a grey wolf that adds up to 850k silver, I have 6.5 million lead silver to spend directly and about 1.7 million in sell orders which brings my total silver to 9 million which is enough to buy 30 days of premium. At this point, my specializations are at level 50 and my masteries are almost 73. Given this took an average of 5 hours per day for just 3 days on a brand new character, I think my very first Zero to Hero challenge was an enormous success. I hope you enjoyed watching this challenge of mine and that you learned a thing or two that can help you with your gameplay. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. Let me know in the comments below what other challenges you would like to see me do. And if you want to do this challenge for yourself, you can do so with any of the starter builds I've shared in the next video.